Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down and back in for a little spook. October action. That's right, man. Uh, all month long here at the Cinema Sit Down, I have been watching and reviewing a different scary, spooky, and Halloween movie. Man, we've been trying to do them every day. Some days I fall behind, like yesterday, so we got to play a little catch up. But I'm psyched because that means we got really two awesome classic horror movies from when I was a kid growing up. Uh, these are two of my favorites from like my generation of horror and Two movies that I'm quite glad get to be put in to the conversation of great horror movies that came out of my generation. Like I, I'm proud of my generation for including these in the litany of wonderful horror movies. And this first one is just an immediate classic and one of my all-time favorites. So why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We are getting ready to dive in to Scream. And yes, I want to apologize to all you Scream fans. We're like two days behind because we had the flip-flop with the witches. Didn't get it posted yesterday. I know you've been waiting. I've been waiting to talk about it. I'm super excited. And like I said, Scream is just one of those movies that for me was an instant classic. It, it's the horror movie that me and all my friends identify with first. Like if you say name a horror movie, the first thing that's going to come to my head is Scream. Because that's the horror movie that came like out of my generation of watching movies and consuming these things. And yes, we'd all seen the classics. And we understood. And it was good that we had seen the classics. Because when you went into Scream, one of the things that makes this movie so special is the way it acknowledges directly all the movies that came before it and just finds wonderful ways to pay homage and play with the idea of paying homage to these types of movies inside the movie. There's some really wonderful meta moments uh, in the film and, and across the board um, that work as you kind of create this iconic slasher flick that literally is paying tribute to all the things that came before it. And Kevin Williamson, who wrote the script here, I think just turns out a really, really impressive script. Like I said, it does all the things you look for in a slasher movie. It's got wonderful kill moments. It's got a great killer story. Um, it, it, it's got just moments that set you up for things to happen that you don't always see coming. And the movie constantly keeps you on your toes as to who the killer is is i love that it throws billy down your throat pushes him so much in your face that you get to the point where it's like well it's too obvious it, it can't be this guy and it's the perfect red herring of one of the actual killers like to use a killer as a red herring in the movie i is just one of those things i thought was really genius coming from williamson and then the idea to use two killers um you know to be able to play a, a moment where it looks like you murdered billy and like re-cement the fact that it's definitely not him that when he pops back up you're like oh damn and just like i said all the all the little nods and, and touches to things that came before it like you know when you get to the end of the movie and billy is finally dead and you're like you know jamie kennedy's character is like this is the moment when like the killer makes one last scare and like you know you see ski Ulrich pop up and poof, they shoot him right in the head um like things like that um you know, just the direct, the, the, the entire scene with Jamie Kennedy uh, where he's breaking down horror movies and the rules to horror movies or why Jamie Lee Curtis is the scream queen um, and just pointing out all the things that, you know, make a horror movie or specifically a slasher movie tick and then applying them, you know, in the movie, right? Like you just finished talking about how like you never say I'll be right back and then... Uh, you know, Matt Lillard's character, Stuart, gets up and is like, I'm going to go get some beers. Anybody need anything? Cool. I'll be right back. And like playing with those ideas inside the movie, for me, was like something I had never seen before. And then, like I said, the actual script itself is really solid. Like the story uh, of Sydney uh, Prescott uh, and where like, you know, how the murder of her mother ties in, how all of this ties into what the overall plot line is. Um, it is just really, really interesting, good material for this type of movie. And then when you have Wes Craven behind the camera with material this good, I mean, you're obviously going to get an iconic movie. And it's one of those things, man, where so many things in this movie just like immediately pop and like immediately entered themselves into the iconic litany of slasher movies that had come before. From The Ghost Mask, which was a genius concept, and, you know, immediately became one of the most popular Halloween costumes back in the 90s. Like, you'd see that Scream costume everywhere. And then the fact that the, the, the series would continue to play with that idea, like, we're gonna make a Scream movie inside of a Scream movie based on that first movie, and, like, have people at the theater, so, like, all the people are wearing masks. Like, this... 
even as they get more ridiculous, this series, top to bottom across the board, is just so rock solid. And it starts with this one. And the things that Craven does with the camera, when and where he decides to have, you know, a moment with the killer be like a jump scare or just have him come out of nowhere um, or creep up on you. Like all the elements that he knows how to play with, he executes wonderfully. And then he gives you moments that just immediately like stick with you. That opening scene with Drew Barrymore. Uh, just genius to like take the, you know, when a stranger calls concept, you know, and obviously this goes into Williamson's script, but the execution in the film is perfect. Have that whole conversation happen on the phone. Have your killer toying with his victim. Have him torturing his victim, like, mentally, as, you know, he kills, like, her boyfriend and, like, tests her with a quiz. Like, if you get any of these wrong, your boyfriend's gonna die. And, like, to hit him with the, you know, who who was the killer of Friday the 13th. And she's like, Jason, Jason, Jason. It's like, no, it's Mrs. Voorhees. Now your, your boy's gonna die. And then to have the grisly deaths that you get in that open. I mean, the full gutting of her boyfriend on her patio. Then slowly stabbing and then gutting... Drew Barrymore's character and then hanging her from a tree with her own intestines like Craven just crafts wonderful horror imagery throughout uh, you know within the context of the slasher movie I mean friggin uh, when Rose McGowan's character it's one of the most ridiculous deaths in the in the movie and again one of those things where that to me kind of feels like an homage play like some of these movies especially as you got further down the line got more and more absurd and the idea of rose mcgowan's character trying to crawl through a doggy door in the garage door and the powered garage door actually raising and lifting her and granted it does struggle but to lift her and crush her face the way it does like not the most realistic but it plays so well because the whole scene is executed so well um and then easily one of my favorite sequences of the whole movie is around the party and that whole scene with jamie kennedy breaking down you know the slasher flick and horror movies and, and the rules to scary movies you know how you got to be a virgin if you, you do anything sexual you're gonna die if you say you'll be right back you're gonna die like going through all that stuff that whole setup the way just that whole scene moves is wonderful but then how they're able to play on the back end of that with uh the, the camera that gail weathers puts in to set up one of the best jump scares for me when her cameraman opens the door because they're seeing the killer is inside forgetting that there's a tape delay so when he opens the door and the killer's right there you're like oh crap like damn it and it's those things that, that just really work in the movie. And then the build and execution of the reveal that Stuart and Billy are the two killers, I just thought was executed perfectly. And for me, you ain't never gonna find a complaint about Scream, man. Like for me, in the world of slashers, this is one of those perfect slasher movies. And the cast is just fantastic. And like, just the best use of like you know 90 the, the young crop of, of you know 90s hollywood and I, I love that you open with drew barrymore someone who's been acting the entire decade before that in the 80s um you know was the perfect kind of face to start that movie and then pass off to to the crop of nev campbell and ski ulrich and um, Matthew Lillard and Jamie Kennedy, and then even on, on the you know more seasoned side, David Arquette and Courtney Cox and Liev Shriver, um, just a wonderful young crop of Hollywood um, that kind of hits different marks. Um, but just like you think of the '90s, and all of the faces in this movie are faces you think of, um, which is just one of the things I love about the cast. The execution across the board is fantastic. Neff Campbell is tremendous you know she was she was already doing party of five by that point she was a bit of a known commodity and like this put her on the map put her in, in the in the list of iconic scream queens right out the gate and when you look back at the series that have you know the same female character that goes over and over Sydney Prescott's one of the best, man. I put her right up there with Laurie Strode. Um, and, and I just, I love what Nev Campbell brings to the role and how, how much fun she has with the terror and the trauma. She handles all of that stuff so, so well. Um, you know, just mixed into this all out wild, you know, you know, murder plot that is all to just get to her. Um, and everything that she does it is just wonderful. Skeet Ulrich. Perfect casting. Um, he plays creepy boyfriend so, so well, but is able to give you those really sweet moments where you're like, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Like, I, I, I get he's got his, but like, you, you, he's not the killer. Um, and he does play that stuff perfectly. And then when it's revealed that he's the killer, the sadistic, crazy 
that Skeet Ulrich goes to, the point where he even kills his own best friend, Stuart. Like, just excellent stuff. And, like, so much of it in the face. And what, what Ulrich does physically, um, from the looks and, and the vibe of him, is just... There are times it makes your skin crawl, for sure. Uh, and then partner Matthew Lillard, I mean, phenomenal comic relief when you need a joke um, or a laugh. He's always perfect for those types of things. And another person who does a really good job of, of you know, setting up your red herrings and trying to direct you towards or away from things um, without even putting together that he's in the middle of all of it, too. Um, and like I said, that scene with him and Billy where they're stabbing each other and he's, like, dying and Billy is like, come on, Stuart, we got He's like, Billy, Matthew... I'm dying, man. Like, you got me deep. Um, just that execution. It's like things like that that just stand out in the movie still to this day that work. Um, and I just, I'm a big fan of Matthew Lillard. Um, and again, this is one of those spots where he really kind of popped off and set up his whole run through the 90s uh, in this movie. Um, like I said, Jamie Kennedy. I adore Jamie Kennedy. Uh, his role is so perfect. His role is like what I would be if I was in the Scream movie. Working at the video store, knows all the stuff about the horror movies. Um, and again, no, someone else who's just able to inject a little life, a little fun and levity into a movie that's got so much horror and terror mixed into it. Um, I love him. Rose McGowan, perfect best friend for Sydney. Um, you know, and she plays that like tough, confident high school bitch so well. Um, and really mixes quite well with that kind of back and forth, like, you know, where Sydney is a little bit less confident, you know, uh, Rose McGowan's character is able to pick that up and just delivers. And then you got Courtney Cox and David Arquette, um, two people that I just love in this movie. I love Gail Weathers. I hate Gail Weathers because she's just relentless. But from the side of, you know, that, that journalistic drive to, like, try to find that story, I can appreciate that coming from a journalism school. And, and she does all of those things so well. And still, it, like even though there are times where you're just like, come on, Gail, seriously? She finds a way to give you enough where you're like, well, you know, I do kind of like her. Um, and it even happens to the kids in the movie. Like, And when she shows up at the end to help save the day, you're just like, you know what? Damn it, I'm on the Gail Weathers train, <laughs> even though she'll try to kick you off of it more than once. Um, and David Arquette um, as Officer Dewey. I mean... He's one of the most recognizable characters in that movie. Um, I, I love, again, how he can play that kind of quirky, somewhat doofusy uh, like role and incorporate it into what he is as a police officer. Um, and then, at the same time, give you that like heart that you need in the movie where like Dewey is just a really good guy trying to do the right thing. He's just not really great at his job. Um, and, and his chemistry, obviously, with Courtney Cox um, back then was fantastic. Um, and, and I just, you know, one of those things, again, like these were faces you saw all the time in the 90s. And just across the board, everybody that's in this movie does a great job. Even young Henry Winkler, yes. For me, when I watched this movie, it was old Henry Winkler. I was like, that's the Fonz? Damn, man, the Fonz got old. Watching this movie now that we've seen what old Henry Winkler looks like, you're like, oh, you know what? The Fonz was still, he was still looking pretty Fonzy. And, you know, a, a wonderful cameo uh, performance to prop in there uh, for anyone who grew up, uh, you know, watching Nick at Night and, and knew who, you know, who the Fonz was. Uh, it was one of those moments where I was like, Fonz is in the movie. That's awesome. Um, so I love Scream, man. As you can see, I could talk about Scream for hours on end. Um, it is one of my favorite horror slasher flicks of all time and one of my favorite slasher franchises of all time. I, I just think they have found ways to reinvent that franchise and keep that story going at times when you think that it shouldn't. And of all of the ones that have more than four movies, um, I think Scream's got, Scream's got maybe some of the strongest across the whole franchise. Um, just really, really big fan of Scream. So there you go, man. Those are all my thoughts on Scream. One of my all-time favorites. You're never going to find me nitpicking or finding anything wrong with this movie. It still plays so, so well. The question is, do you think it plays well still? Uh, did you grow up uh, you know, in, in that era of the original slashers? And did, did Scream meet your standards, you know, to be welcomed into that fraternity? Um, or did you grow up with Scream? Was that one of your first intros in? Maybe learning uh, things about those horror movies led you to some of the classics. Uh, where did you fall in, in the world of Scream? What did you think your first time you saw it? Does it, does it, does it belong in that group of iconic horror slasher films? Do, do, do the killers belong in, in that group even though they changed? 
consistently the iconic look of the Scream character. Um, where does that fall in your rankings? Um, anything you're thinking about Scream, good, bad, or indifferent, down below in the comment section. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, welcome hang out with the C-Man the rest of Spooktober. And you haven't yet, you want to show a little love, support for the channel? Jump over there, man. Hit that subscribe button. You can come join the rest of the C-Maniacs. Uh, have me pop up in your feed. And if you want those alerts, hit that little bell uh, that follows the subscription button. And until next time, for the C-Mans, sit down. I've been the C-Man. I'm signing off. Peace. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. C-Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet and you want to come check out all the C-Man goodies, Join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.